Have you been told in life that you're too bold, too outspoken, too loud, too opinionated, too competitive, too driven, too ambitious? Well, if you have, you're in good company because I had the same for most of my life and I'm here to tell you that you are not too much. In fact, it is time for you to dial it back up, my friend. There is such a thing as being bold and humble. Bold does not equal arrogant. Arrogance is a condition of the heart, so is humility. So it is possible and very good to be bold and humble. In fact, it's one of the most powerful secret weapons in people and relationship skills and personal style on the planet, and it's not taught enough. How to be bold and humble, how to be bold and outspoken and accessible and relatable and approachable. These are all things that I teach in my coaching program. And these are things that I want to give you right here, right now in this video, because it is nonsense that you're too bold. If you're worried about outshining somebody else and dimming her light, I've got good news for you, my friend. You ain't that powerful. Only God or only she can dim her light. Your light, your calling is to get up, dress up and be a bold light on a hill. Most especially if you are a woman of faith, doesn't it say the righteous are as bold as a lion? So let's you and I get together in this video and get going on how to take that beautiful, bold, God-given personality and put it out there for the good. Here's the fact about boldness. It is a good thing. It is not a negative thing. Bold is not arrogant. Bold is not overconfident. Bold is not too opinionated. Bold is just bold. Bold colors, bold ideas, bold concepts. These are good things. So you can do a word search if you want to. You can do a word study like I love doing over the years because understanding the words that we use and how we assign them to ourselves and our lives is really important. Bold is a beautiful thing. Boldness and a shine and a brightness is a good thing. We are all drawn to that. Now, what you do with that when that when people are drawn to you is the next step. And I'm going to show you what to do with that. I'm going to show you how to go from being the center of attention to being the center of influence. That is at the very core, at the very heart of being bold. I'm going to start here that if you are a woman of faith, that if you have come into agreement over the years, that you're too bold and too loud and you dress up too much, you got to tone it down, you got to level it down. You have a role to play in this. When things go wrong, one of the first things I always ask myself is what was my role in it? And if you have come into agreement that you are too bold too much, you have some repenting to do, my friend. And all that requires is drawing a line in the sand saying, I'm going to decide today to have a conversation with my creator saying, thank you for my bold personality because we need those bold moves and those bold decisions on this planet. Lord knows we need that. And so you need to repent for coming into agreement and responding to with action, turning down and dimming your light. Once you do that, you'll find that you give yourself permission that you'll get back out there saying, okay, I'm bringing back the bold. I'm going to reconnect with the woman in the mirror who was designed and birthed with a God-given boldness that people love. So that's your first step. If you want to get back out there to get up, dress up and arise and shine, which is the call on your life, is you need to take accountability. You must take ownership of the fact that you came into agreement with that. You acted in accordance with that. You complained about it. You feel frumpy and frustrated and dialed down as a result. You take ownership. You ask for forgiveness of your creator and whoever else you feel needs to be part of that conversation. And then we go to the next step. When it comes to personal style, I always say don't dress for success. Don't dress to impress. Dress to connect. What does that mean? It means that you dress on the outside in a way that reflects the woman on the inside. And when it comes to bold personalities, one of the easiest ways to do that is through accessories. Today, I've got what I would regard as quite small, medium-sized bling on. Accessories are a beautiful way to express your preferences, your love of color, and what kind of personality actually resides on the inside of this beautiful human being. So if you are anything like me, I love big chunky earrings. I normally wear earrings that are this big. I'm not crazy about necklaces. Why? Because I have really studied myself and my body well, and I know what I like, and I know what makes me feel confident or doesn't. And I happen to be what I call blessed in the chest. After a uh, breast reduction, reduction 22 years ago, I'm still a 32F, which means when I wear necklaces, I feel like I'm drawing attention to my chest. I love my body. I love all of it. I've taught myself how to do that, but I don't necessarily want to highlight my boobs. 
So I wear big chunky earrings. I wear lots of bracelets. This is a little bit for me today. This is a teeny tiny little dash of bling. But bold bling is a way that you can express on the outside the woman that is on the inside. So that when you walk in a room, you can take a perfectly plain black outfit. I've got black cargo pants on. And I've got this cute little uh, one shoulder black jersey on. And you can walk into a room and without saying a word, making sure that your smile backs it up. You can walk into a room and communicate that you are an adventurous, risk-seeking, interesting, spontaneous, bold personality. Because you've got the eye contact, your confidence is backed up through your body language and all of those good things which we'll touch on in a minute. But what you've got, beautiful, big, bold bling that is unique and it's, and it's not seen in every store and you can't get it just everywhere. That's one way of demonstrating that you're bold and that you are a woman of substance, a woman of style, a woman of strength. And that is a good thing. Remember, you want to be the center of influence, not the center of attention. And accessories is one way to do that. So if you don't know how to do that, you're so welcome to click on the link below, join my next free webinar, and I talk about accessories and how to use them to express on the outside the woman that is on the inside, because that is called dressing to connect. Another favorite saying of mine is red, enough said. As far as I'm concerned, and in my experience in almost 51 years, red is a bold, beautiful, biblical color. It is everywhere. It's used in uh, social science studies. It's used in the Bible. It's used everywhere to communicate confidence and strength. It also is used to signal danger and alert, which is an equally strong message to get out there to the world. So if you don't have red in your wardrobe, let me tell you about a survey that I did about four and a half years ago. I asked a large number of men, I said to them, what is the one color that you love to see women wearing most? Guess what they said? Red. And then I asked an even larger group of women, uh, what is the color that you wish you wore more of, that you had more of in your wardrobe? A color that makes you feel beautiful and confident and sexy. Guess what they said? You're right. Red. Guess what's not on your wardrobe? Yep. Red. Think about it. So we can go into all the reasons of why you don't have red in your closet. Maybe you were raised in a very religious BS environment that says red is evil and all that. That's another conversation for another time. One of my favorite conversations. Uh, you might have, you might not have the courage to wear it, or you might wish, gosh, I wish I, I, could, I would wear more of it. Or when I wear it, I, I get so much attention, I get uncomfortable. And that's something else I, I teach. Come on over to my free webinar. I do it on a, on a regular basis. It's in the link below, lindapage.com. I will give you scripts for the quips that you get when you get up, dress up. I'll give you tools on how to use fashion as a connector for it not to be a barrier, but a bridge between people, especially between women. So adding a dash of bold. Today, I've got, a, I've got some hot pink lipstick on, but this morning I had some red on. You can go to the grocery store in a white t-shirt, some jeans and some tennis shoes, put on a baseball cap. And if you just add a dash of red and some cute little earrings and you have eye contact and a smile, let me tell you something. You're going to be received and perceived differently. You're going to be treated differently. People are going to approach you because you're going to look like you are approachable. You're going to look like that confident, successful, approachable woman that this world is looking for. And so why would you want to be that? Well, why wouldn't you, for goodness sake? Because when you attract amazing people and powerful opportunities into your life, well, you start living the life that you want to live. That's when you start getting up and dressing up and being that bold light on a hill that you are called to be. So red is a very simple, inexpensive way to start adding that dash of bold to plain outfits. You do not need a lot of money to look good. Looking good is not expensive, nor does it need to take a lot of time. So add a dash of bold to your lipstick. You might decide to wear a fun, bold red and white or black scarf if it's a little bit chilly out. You might decide uh, nail polish is another accessory that you can use to bring bold or hot pink or blue or whatever it is. Start using personal style through accessories and jewelry and scarves and hats and baseball caps and shoes and nail polish to start adding that dash of bold because that is going to be in alignment with your God-given personality and you will instantly feel the difference. Another very simple way of bringing in a dash of bold is through a purse, a handbag or a crossbody bag or a clutch. These are incredibly simple, beautiful, essential items that belong in your closet. So for example, I do a 30 piece capsule wardrobe, some basic essential staple items in staple colors that are very versatile and make it easy to mix and match to with few items, create multiple different ensembles for any given day, for any kind of occasion. 
So when it comes to handbags, however, something that I see a lot of women falling prey to is getting the it bag, especially beautiful, bold women. They want the it bag. They want the statement bags. You can make a statement without falling prey to fashion fads out there, which is another reason why you shouldn't be subscribing to fashion magazines because they're sending you the stuff and they're sending you the statement bags and sending you what everyone else is buying. If you are a bold personality, you want to build a wardrobe that is full of unique items that represent and reflect the uniqueness in your personality. You know you have levels of uh, creativity, experience, and expertise that a lot of people don't have. How do you reflect that on the outside to attract the people and the opportunities into your life? Personally and professionally, you look for unique pieces to reflect on the outside, the woman that is on the inside. So a big tip is do not fall prey to the it bag. The, whether it's the Birkin or whether it's something else or the Michael Kors, but nothing against these brands individually. But what I don't like to see is women looking very cookie cutter, copy and paste, because that's what the magazine this season is selling. You need to train your mind and train your eye. Come on the journey with me and I'll help you. Train your mind and train your eye to understand what do I like? What are the colors? Do I love sunshine yellow? Is it emerald green that gets me going? Do I want a pair of flat ballet pumps instead of just the black ones I've had for the last 12 years? This is how you add a dash of bold and it's surprising and it catches people off guard. Black jersey, black pants, and suddenly there's hot pink, uh, beautiful, comfortable, flat Steve Madden shoes. You don't have to wear high heels to look good, by the way. I love heels, but if you can't or won't, you don't have to wear heels to look good. So adding a dash of bold through a crossbody bag, for example, if I'm in all black, I have got about seven or eight different crossbody bags. One is gold, one is black and white zebra print, uh, one is leopard print, one is, they're all different. And if I want to add a splash of uh, a dash of something, a dash of bold, you can, these days you get beautiful interchangeable straps for your crossbody bags, for your purses, for your tote bags even. So you want to keep an eye out for this. You don't have to break the bank to look good and you don't have to have three big walk-in closets to have all the options. You can have a very unique, versatile, diverse closet on a small budget. You could just understand that to express your bold personality, you just need small little dashes of bold. And bags, purses, clutches, and crossbody bags are a really easy way to do that. What I'm going to share with you next is applicable to any personality and any woman of any age or phase of her life. But it's most particularly applicable to the bold personality because here's from one bold person to another. Here's one thing that sometimes we are unaware of and we've got to get this right is if you're bold and you're strong and you're adventurous and you've got that extra uh, dose of ambition that makes you go out there and just you take action, which is awesome like I do, then we must remember that usually on our face is a, a frown of um, focus and, 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 and concentration and sometimes we, we forget to smile. So you take a bold personality, an outspoken woman, an ambitious competitive person like I am, and you take away the smile and uh, you have serious direct eye contact, you could be delivering a very intimidating, negative, don't come near me message. You don't want to do it. You think you want to deliver that message, you don't. No matter what kind of trauma or abuse that you've suffered in your past, I have my own story, you never want to put out that don't approach me. Okay? Unless you're going through some serious healing and grief recovery, which sometimes is relevant, but, and having done a lot of that myself, you need to come out, out of that. You don't want to be that untouchable, unapproachable woman. The world is looking for beautiful, confident, kind, successful, bold, approachable women to do business with and do life with. So you want to put that message out there. So you want to be really aware of your, uh, uh, your, your body language and your facial expressions. Now, let me give you a great story that I heard from a friend not too long ago about how important body language is. So Marilyn Monroe, we all know Marilyn Monroe, the beautiful woman that she was. Um, uh, she was in New York um, in the subway. So she lived in LA. She's in New York on the subway with her photographer. It was the photographer's wife that shared this story with the media at one time. And it just hit the headlines all over the world because it's so powerful. So she's walking with this photographer. They're on the subway in New York City and no one's recognizing her. She's Marilyn Monroe, she's beautiful, but no one's recognizing her, no one's stopping and looking. And then uh, he was quite surprised. And then she said to him, watch this. And all of a sudden she stepped into the persona that was Marilyn Monroe with direct eye contact, a, a, a coy 
little smile and her chin was up, her shoulders were back, suddenly her back was straighter, she pulled in her core and she just had a different air about her. It was a matter of seconds before people started recognizing her, asking for her autograph and asking to have their photo taken with her. Yes, true story, you can go and check it out. Marilyn Monroe and uh, body language. So that also speaks to, it's not just what you wear, it's how you wear it. I can wear what I'm wearing, be totally unaware of how I'm sitting down on a Zoom call, which maybe you attend a lot, and I can do this. And I'm gonna give you a very different message. Okay, and a couple of messages go by, and like I'm looking around and I'm not, I can give you a very different message by coming closer to the camera, making sure that I have eye contact, giving a smile every now and again. I'm not saying you're gonna sit there the whole time and do this because that's not natural either, right? But I am saying, be aware of your body language. Have good, uh, solid, straight shoulders. Have your chin up. And if you're a bold personality, don't be unaware of the possibility that you may come across intimidating to a lot of people. It is what it is. Don't fight it. It's a terrible and sad thing if you are someone who says, well, if she's intimidated by me, that's her problem. No, it's not. No, it's not. You have influence. Why wouldn't you want to positively influence someone who is feeling intimidated by you? If you have the opportunity, why wouldn't you want to do that? It's a good thing to do. That's the difference between bold and arrogant. Bold is not arrogant. Bold is beautiful. Bold is necessary. Bold is essential and exciting and adventurous. So if you have been dialing it down, it is time for you to dial it up, my friend. If you don't know how, click on the link below, find me, and let's you and I do life together because I will help you on how to do that. So wrapping up on the topic of bold, number one, it is a God-given characteristic that was meant and designed for the good. Number two, you cannot dim anybody else's light. Only God can do that, only she can do that. So why don't you just dial back up the light that you were given? Number three, you were called to arise and shine, to get up, dress up, and be a bold light on a hill. You don't see the majestic, powerful mountains apologizing for its power. You don't, you don't see a beautiful jaguar apologizing for its power and its strength and its stealth and its beauty. You don't see the ocean or a beautiful animal cowering back and trying to apologize for its God-given bold beauty. No. So you don't have a right to do that either. We have no right to dial down the bold beauty that was his creation. So that is most, that is at the heart of your spirit of beauty. So if you've been living that way, dialing it down and Blending into the back. Listen, those days are up, okay? Today is that we push the reset button, you and I. It is time for you to rise and shine. Remember how I spoke to you about adding a dash of bold with red lipstick. Add your crossbody bag with a with a hot pink neon message if you want to. Dial it up with the hat, the baseball cap, the, the, the scarves, the nail polish. If you don't know how to do that, start small. Do that little nail polish or do a little bit of pink gloss if you've never worn lipstick. There are so many ways you can carry a water bottle that has a bolder color than just black or white. There's so many ways to do it, but at the end of the day, let me tell you something that is a fact, that you are called to arise and shine, and your bold personality has purpose. It has a mission on this planet, and that is to get up, dress up, and go be a bold light on a hill, and go and help others to do the same. You have inside of you a desire to help others, but you can't do that, my friend, for the long term. It's not sustainable until you reconnect with the woman in the mirror, apologize to her if you need to as well for dialing down her light, for having the audacity to dim it all down. And for all legitimate reasons, I'm not underscoring that, but you, when you take responsibility for who you are, how you dress and, and how you live life out there, I'm telling you it's so empowering that you'll be thanking me for saying, Linda, thanks for giving me the permission to be bold like I was designed to be. And I'll be saying, you're so welcome and we'll have a glass of wine or some champagne or some bubbly to celebrate that. Don't dial it down. Don't blend into the background. You'll be frumpy, frustrated, and grumpy, and everybody around you will, will, will know it. Your boldness is a gift, and it has a purpose. And if you don't even know what to do as a next step, and if you are overwhelmed or excited right now because you're hearing this, click on the link, lindapage.com. Join my next free webinar. Join my community where what I do is I help women to build a beautiful wardrobe on a budget customized to their personality, their body shape, their lifestyle, their profession. But secretly, I help my clients and the members of my community to fall in love with the woman in the mirror. And most especially, 
the one who's told that she's too bold, too much, too loud, too... Hmm. We undo all of that limiting belief system and we push the reset button and we start over. You can live the rest of your life as the best of your life. It is Tuesday, my friend. What will you choose today? 